Lottie has three tickets in a raffle. Just going to jot that down. This is what is it? Question twenty. Lottie, Lottie. has three tickets. <laughs> Lottie equals three tickets. That's the sum total of who she is. Uh, there are twenty-five <laughs> tickets in total and two prizes. So twenty-five tickets total. Hey, yes. Of what? Oh, you mean the working? Of that one. Uh, I'll come back. I'll give you like a neater version of that. I promise. Okay. But I'm okay with you taking a picture. All right. And then it says draw a probability tree. Now, shh, I saw a bunch of you actually, and I kind of <laughs> I was delighted looking at you all around the um around the room. We got every version, right? There are three numbers here. There are three numbers here, and you've already been told draw a probability tree. So I saw some of you start off like this, and you were like. Uh oh, this is this is not going well, right? So what what is this? It's like oh, I have twenty five tickets. Let's draw out twenty five things, and then you're like, no, no, that's a bad idea. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. Now you might then think, well, what about the three? Right, Lottie's got three tickets. Start drawing out like this. Now there's a there's a logic behind that, right? I've got three options there. There's just a teeny bit of a problem. What do like if I were to say, let's just let's just draw it out like this as an example, right? Shh. Um, this is a, a word that I haven't ever seen formally used, but I think you'll know what I mean when I show you the diagram here, right? Each, I'm going to call them layer, each layer of the probability tree represents something, right? It represents something happening. So for example, if I said, oh, we're flipping coins or rolling dice, right? Each layer of the probability tree would be, um, I flipped a coin, right? And then here were all the things that could have happened. Does that make sense? Like heads or tails. Or I, I rolled the dice, and then here are all the things that could happen. One, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Okay? Now, if these two represent different events, do three different things happen? Hey, Hello? Hey. Are you looking is, for someone? Uh, is, um, is she here? Uh, no, not today, no. unfortunately. So let them know. He, actually. Yeah, just let them know this way. Bye. Thanks, that's right. See ya. Okay. Shh. Stay, stay with me. So, each one's an event, right? So, you're in some trouble here thinking about having three branches. Not only does your probability tree become very complicated, but it's not the clearest way to represent what's happening. So, here's what I'm going to suggest instead. I just start off drawing two, right? What do they represent? Well, for this, this is, I'm going to draw the first prize in this raffle, right? Everyone, have a look at your ticket numbers. I'm about to draw first prize and we'll find out who it is in the room, okay? So Lottie's looking, she's got her tickets in hand, right? There's only two things that could possibly happen, right? She either wins that first prize or she loses or she doesn't win, okay? So let's think about the chances for each. You can see me having drawn these, right? How many possibilities are there for her to win on that first prize? She's got three of the tickets in her hand, and there are 25 being drawn out of the bucket. Right? So that's where we get this 3 out of 25 from. Does that make sense? Okay. Then down the bottom here, that's just the, what, what do we call this? Starts with a C? It's the everything else that could happen. Compliment. Compliment, very good. 22 out of 25. Stay with me at 12. So from there, right, that's the first prize. And you can see, I think it's helpful to actually call it that, right? Um, do you have to? No, but I'm just confused if I don't actually label what's going on. And then the same thing happens again, right? When we're looking at the second prize, the first thing that I notice is the sample space has changed, right? For all of these different things, there are no longer 25 tickets in the bucket, right? Because one's been taken out. Whoever won that, won. Either Lottie won or someone else did, right? So everything here is going to be out of 24. Every single thing. So I write down that first, okay? She still has the chance for winning or losing in each case. And now I just need to know how many tickets are left in each category, okay? Uh, let's go down to the first one, right? If she won the first time, she's like, oh, cool. Ticket number one, it won. Is that relevant to her winning again? Well, it can't be. It's already been pulled out, right? So therefore, she only has two tickets left in her hand that could still win out of the 24 that are there, right? And then, of course, you still have the complement, 22 out of 24 there, right? 
If she didn't win the first time, she, you know, some other number, person's number got called, she's got tickets one, two, and three in her hand, they could all still be winners, right? So that's why her possibility there is three out of 24. Um, and then there's your compliment. Okay, Michelle, question. So, but then, part B is probability of money winning the second prize. Mm -hmm. is beyond 25. Yes. So where do I get these number from? Okay, and it's true, the, the answer itself doesn't tell you very much, right? The question says, find the probability that Lottie wins the second prize. So do I care what happens to the first prize? No. No, I do not, right? So therefore, I can consider both of these branches. Either of them are fine, right? So let's go up this first one, right? So if she wins the first prize, the probability of her winning the second prize is um, this one up here, right? Now this goes right back to the first question, right? These two probabilities here, do I multiply them or do I add them? I multiply. I multiply because I need them both to happen. The first prize has to happen, has to be drawn, and then the second prize is going to be drawn as well. So this guy here would be 3 out of 25 multiplied by 2 out of 24. Is that okay? Which equals what, sorry? Um, uh, looks like it'll be 6 out of uh, 600, I think. Yeah. Which is 1%, right? But this, this is not the whole deal, right? This is just the probability that she wins the first and the second prize. There's another way for her to win the second prize. Which is, let's use a different color, right? She can lose the first prize, right? But that's fine, that's fine. You guys told me the first prize doesn't matter. And then she can win the second prize. So what's the probability of that? Uh, again, I'm going to multiply it. 22 out of 25 multiplied by 3 out of 24. That's 66 out of 600. Is that okay? So now, either of these are fine. So you know how we multiplied to cross, to go across here? Well, I add to go down, like so. So that gives me 72 out of 600, which I hope is 3 out of 25. Thumbs up.